I'm Jude. And I'm Dania. We are Fruit Discoverers. And are we discovering a lot of fruits and vegetables and different kinds of food? Yeah. Yes. So, what are we going to do today, Jude? We're going to read book one page of this. The last page of yes. this one? Eating the alphabet? Okay, and what else? We're going to discover and show our friends a new book that they can read together. Yeah, my book. Okay, and what else? Um, Are we going to prepare a snack together? Yes. Okay. Are we going to tell our friends now what are we preparing or are we going to leave it a surprise at the end? It's a surprise at the end. Okay. So, are you ready? Yes. Okay. So, eating the alphabets, fruits and vegetables from A to Z by Louis Ellert. We will do this book later. <laughs> Last week, we discovered together fruits and vegetables with letter U, V, and W. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And today, what comes after U, V, W? X. X. Y. y. And? D. Oh. Z. So that's the last three letters. Let's see. What do we have here? We have X. That's Shigua? Yeah, it's watermelon. It's a watermelon, that's true. But Shigua is the name of watermelon in China. Letter Y, what do we have here, Jude? Mm, potato, sweet potato. Potato, sweet potato, good job. So, yeah, Y is actually yam, that's like a sweet potato, and but the color of its flesh is orange. So sweet potato and yam and potatoes, they are the same. They are all root vegetables. And where do they grow? I think I get my clothes. That's okay. And where do they grow? Under. Under the ground? Under the ground. Yes, that's why they're called root vegetables. Letter Z, what do we have here? Uh, potato. Mm -hmm. It's a zucchini. Not zucchino. No, it's not zucchino. It's a zucchini. And is it's it a, a... Yeah, that's okay. Zucchini? Yes. And it's a summer squash. It's like a, a summer squash. And where does it grow? It grow on, on vines like bushes? Yes. Yes. So, that's our book. Yes. We finished reading the book and we discovered so many fruits and vegetables with letters from letters A to Z, but friends, don't stop here. Every time you see a new fruit or vegetable, think what letter it starts with, and then also record it on your chart. So I will just flip the page because I have some interesting information here. It says, to learn more about fruits and vegetables in this book, turn the page, and when we turn it, we find the glossary of all the fruits and vegetables that were in this book with some information about them. And that's a three page. What's that here? That's the cover of the book. Yeah. The end. Before this book, yeah. let's color. You want to draw and color the zucchini and the sweet, the yam? Okay. Here we go. Give me the orange color here. This one? Yes. Okay, this one. You're gonna draw the zucchini. Okay. Here. I'm drawing this one. I'm faster. You're fast? Wow. Look, I'm fast. I'm fast. So, so one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen, eleven, twelve. Let's go! Okay. So here is our zucchini and our yam. Now let's do this big we are going to show you a book that we found at the Toronto Public Library, yes, and it's called What's on My Plate. This book is written by Ruth B. Love Cross, and um, we are not going to read it all. We're not just going to show you an example of this book and why was this book written. So let's see here. Here, wait, let's read this. With supermarkets full of processed and packaged food, it's often difficult for people to make the connection between what they eat and where it comes from, especially kids, right? So this is especially true for young, young children. 
And this unique concept book answers these questions about the source of such familiar foods as orange juice and scrambled eggs, hamburgers, tuna fish, peas and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yes, it's really great working on their curiosity and to find the origin of these foods. So here, let's start by this page. What's on my plate here? This. It's applesauce. Yes. Where did it come from? From the tree. Oh no, on the apple. Good job. So applesauce comes from apples that grow on a tree. Apple juice, apple pie, and applesauce and candied apples all the, come from the, apples. The, the candy apple does have no space. Yes, that grow on a tree. So that's the source of applesauce. Let's skip some pages. This this is interesting. What's in my bowl? It's cereal. Where does cereal come from, Jude? From the box. <laughs> High five. Not from the box? Actually, when we put it in our bowl, we pour it from the box, but it doesn't come from the box. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So, cereal comes from plants that grow in a field. <laughs> Wheat plants, corn plants, rice plants, and oats. The seeds are the part that the cereal is made from. So cereals come from seeds, okay? And now, I know many of you like this, so we have to really talk about it. Yes. So what do we have here, Jude? Chocolate. Chocolate. What's in my dish? It's chocolate pudding. Where did it come from? So where did the chocolate pudding come from? From this to this. From the chocolate, right? From this to this. From the chocolate cake? And from this to this. Yes, so, but where did the chocolate really come from? I don't know. This, I think where it is. I don't know. Yes, so this is what we are going to talk about. Our question here is, where do chocolate come from? Where do chocolate come from? Yes. So let's see, look back and see. We have a cocoa cedar bean, it's planted, it will grow into a tree flower and then a cocoa pod will come out from the tree. And this cocoa pod, it might have different colors depending on how ripe it is. It might be greenish, purplish, but it's ripe when it's orange to brownish. When they pick this cocoa pods out, they cut them, we find inside the cocoa beans. And there's almost around 50 cocoa beans in each one. Do you think now we can have chocolate? No, not really. So the cocoa beans will have a milky white color. But if you try them, they are really very, very bitter. And that's not where we can have the chocolate yet. So they take out these cocoa beans and they dry them out. So they might try them out using machines or they lay them onto trays and let them dry by the sun. After that, what happens? These cocoa beans go to the chocolate factory. And what happens in the chocolate factory? They roast them. Yes, we will do that. So they will roast them at the chocolate factory and that's when they will start having that chocolatey smell. But are they still ready now? Hmm, not yet. Still, they don't have the delicious taste of chocolate and they are still a little bitter. So after that, what do they do? They chop them into small uh, cocoa nips and they Put them under some heat and pressure and what will happen some liquid will come out that's the cocoa butter that's what they make the chocolate from after also mixing it with some milk and sugar and other ingredients and that's how we have our chocolate now we will make it jude is so excited because we are going to prepare something chocolatey together what are we going to prepare chocolatey together chocolate milk are we going to make chocolate milk because like mainly the most chocolate milks that we find in stores are really full of sugar and so many other ingredients so we can make ours at the home that is more healthy and nutritious and it doesn't take so much time okay what do you have by your side Jude? let's see 
I think I have this one. Well, what's this one? We have to give them names. Grace and we need a spoon. Okay. And what else? What do we need here? A milk. Milk? We have 500 milliliters of milk. We need unsweetened cocoa powder and something to mix them in. Yes. And that's it. That's it. So if you don't have dates, you can sweeten it with uh, some maple syrup. But dates will give it some thick consistency and we like that. So let's start. What are we going to add first? Milk. Milk. So we have here. Milk. Okay. 500 milliliters of cold milk. Okay. Cold milk. Does yes. Mm -hmm. How many dates are we going to add inside? Let's count them. Put them. One. Count them inside. One. One. Right no, no, there is no seed. These are pitted. There is no seeds inside. Where? See? Yeah, careful if your dates have any seeds. No seeds. Yes, all these are pitted. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Two. Four. Five. Okay, it's okay. Five. We don't throw it like this. Okay, so we have five dates inside, and then we are going to add two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. Okay, okay. Shake it. Okay. Boom. Yeah. Mix it? No, no, no. Wait, there's two. And then you can add them right away to your blender. Oh, more? That's okay. One more. Shake it, now it's too full. Yes. More? That's it. I want to mix it. No, we will not, we will. If you don't have any blender or a smoothie maker, uh, you can just simply add them to a jar and you can use your hand blender in, or even you can add them in a jar, but you have to have some strong hands to shake them well. Okay, so be right back. We're back, and do we have our homemade chocolate milk here? Yes. Okay, this way. Mine? Yeah. You want to put some for mommy? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Let's try and see. Yes. Let's try mine. Yummy. Is it yummy? To make chocolate milk at home and it's really yummy. Because it's really yummy? Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Goodbye. Goodbye.